Patu is something of a miracle, nearly a year old and still living with his mom, Isla, who is recovering from burns suffered in a wildfire. Koalas don't flee from, from danger generally. If they're already on the ground, they will, but it's their instinct to climb, climb up to get away from danger. But then once they go to climb down the tree, they'll get contact burns from, from the tree still being hot. Amber Lilly is a Canadian living here, now a critical lifeline in saving injured koalas and deeply worried about how many have died in this season's wildfires. It's going to be that bad that uh, the next generation may not see a koala in the wild. Really? That's what, it's, that's what it feels like. They've taken in seven from the fires. Four died, and then this morning, Char did two. I really believe that every single koala we can save is, is, uh, is vital. But this is when you couldn't. That's right. They couldn't save Sooty either, and are struggling now to save Smolder and Flash. If you think it's hard to imagine Australia without imagining a koala, well, that is a distinct possibility for the future that they are so under threat from a loss of habitat and now this season's wildfires that in some areas a third of their habitat has disappeared and thousands of them have been killed. I'm disgusted by it. And Ron Land runs Port Stevens Koalas, a rescue organization now building a koala refuge and hospital as the species faces extreme fire and habitat threats. It's killing koalas. It's not only killing koalas, it's killing yeah, you know, just about every other uh, piece of the Australian uh, wildlife uh, base. Prolonged drought has also dangerously dehydrated koalas across the country, like Howie. It's at the point where saving just one more koala is critical. David Common, CBC News, Port Stephens, Australia.